Hi all and welcome to the next review of the Canon R6. Um, I'm Andrew Averly. I'm carrying these reviews out in South Africa with a pre-production model of the Canon R6. And um, I must first thank everybody that's taken the time to ask questions, comment on the last video, the shares and the likes, it's great. Uh, I'm not a professional YouTuber, but uh, I love sharing information and um, the things that I find about the cameras and the um, photography that I do. So uh, kudos, thanks very much. So today we're going to look at a few items. We're going to look at image quality. We're going to look at IBIS, dynamic range, battery, buffer, blackout, and ISO. So I've got a couple of things we're going to discuss today. So um, let's get started. So let's talk about image quality. Uh, before we start, I'd just like to make a full disclaimer. Um, all of the lenses I'm using on these tests are Canon EF lenses. I'm using a 70-200 IS f2.8 Mark I, 100-400 Mark II, and a 200-400 f4 with a built-in converter. The latter two I've been using an additional external 1.4 converter, really pushing uh, the gear, checking the focusing, and also the image quality and speed, etc. So when it comes to image quality, uh, I must say I'm very happy. A lot of people have asked how do I find it from moving from a DSLR to the mirrorless because I would assume that's what a lot of the people are going to be doing who are going to be purchasing R6. They'll be moving over from um, a Canon 7D2 or an 80D or a 90D. But um, I decided to take an image with a Canon 5D Mark IV and try and get the same scene with a Canon uh, EOS R6. Let's have a look at this image and what I found. So here we have the two images, um, on the left the Canon 5D Mark IV and on the right the Canon EOS R6, both taken with a 200-400 f4 lens um, and both in manual, both with the same settings, same white balance, all of the above. As you can see and have a good look here, um, from, from the first look, um, I know the one on the left is a 30 odd megapixel sensor and the one on the right a 20 megapixel sensor. But um, you can immediately see there just seems to be a little bit more crispy contrast, a little bit better color science, and so on. But one needs to bear in mind that when you look at um, images that are from two cameras from many years difference in production, we need to consider that the R6 has got a brand new sensor. It has got um, a much better autofocus sensor. It has also got better algorithms and it has the Digic X processor. All of this makes a huge difference into how it interprets and processes the images. So I wouldn't panic by having a look at this image. Um, you know, it's, it's just better information, better files, better everything. So in that respect, um, I feel if you're worried about upgrading, guys, don't stress. So there you have it. My conclusion, if you're worried about image quality from moving over from DSLR to mirrorless or feel the mirrorless is not going to give you a, a good quality image, you can rest assured it's going to be an incredible uh, quality image for you to use. The next question that I've been asked a few times is IBIS. How do I find the IBIS? Um, first thing we need to realize, the IBIS on the R6 is going to work best with the RF lenses. And that is how the system is designed and you're going to get the maximum use out of it. I've um, looked and done some research and the questions I've asked, um, you know, Canon put out this um, set of uh, statements regarding the stops of stabilization you can get with the Canon R6 and the RF lenses. So let's have a look at this. So here we have the first uh, Canon set of figures that they've uh, published um, with the 2440 and the 100 500 um, and you can see with the lens only you get five stops and with the lens is and the in body is you're going to get six and a half and six so that's uh, pretty good um, very good combination uh, we move up with the rf 15 35l the 35 1.8 macro and the 50 mm f 1.2 l Lens IS and in-body IS a whopping seven stops. So um, that's really impressive. Um, 
the RO50 has no IS, so yeah, seven stops with the body is still very, very impressive. And then they've also come up with the eight stoppers, so um, a 2470, 2410 F4L, 2410 F4 7.1, and 7200F2.8L, all five stops on the lens and eight stops to the lens and IBIS. Except the 2870 F2L, which has got no IBIS, I mean, no IS, is going to give you eight stops with the lens and in body. So uh, that looks pretty great. And as you can see, the system is designed for the Canon uh, RF lenses and the R bodies. Using the Canon R6 with EF lenses um, and the IBIS, well, I, I've, I, I don't want to go into too much technical detail about various things, but the theory behind it is the wider your lens, the more the IBIS and the camera is going to be used. The longer your lens, the more the lens image stabilizer is going to be used. So in a nutshell, the IBIS is going to help you, but it's not a cure. It's not a quick fix for a bad shooting technique or anything like that. As a photographer, you're still going to have to put the effort in to be able to use your technical skills and also the exposure triangle to maximize your settings and continually to get a uh, to, to make sure that you get a sharp and stable image third party lenses um, I can't find out much about it I don't have any third party lenses to test but I would imagine that it's going to be the same principle as the EF lens but I think we need to wait and see until people like SEPA and the big names do their final testing and accreditation to actually officially put out a document on that type of stuff before we can jump into assuming what uh, the Arbus is going to do. The Arbus is a great um, improvement in um, stabilization for me so far, and I'm sure that most people are going to enjoy using the feature. So let's talk dynamic range. Um, I'm really not a big fan of all the technical side of things, as I've mentioned before. So dynamic range for me is not something that I'm going to base a camera purchase decision on. I have more than enough um, control over my exposure to be able to get myself a well exposed good balanced image and I think dynamic range is just something that people need to talk about. I also think that um, you need to leave it to the big names DxO and people like that to give us a proper um, ISO range of how many stops, I mean a dynamic range of how many stops the R6 and the R5 are actually going to deliver. But you need to ask yourself guys, why would you underexpose by 6 stops or overexpose by 6 stops if you've got 12 stops of dynamic range or whatever it is to, 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 to use that as a photographer. Clearly understanding the exposure triangle would be first prize. And if you need to have a wide uh, dynamic range, you can always just auto expose bracket for the images or use the high dynamic range technique. But uh, that's just me. So dynamic range, I find it pretty uh, acceptable in my simple terms and I get a lot of detail out of the shallows, shadows and the highlights when balancing it with a good exposure. So I hope that answers some of your questions with uh, dynamic range. Okay, let's talk battery, buffer, and blackout. First with batteries, um, I feel that uh, Canon, as always, have been very conservative with their predictions of how much you can get out of, uh, how many shots you can get out of one battery. I recently did a four hour game drive and I got over 1800 shots. Yes, I was testing all sorts of things. I don't normally shoot that many, but the uh, battery still showed a third. Be that as it may, as a photographer, if you're investing in a camera like this, a small amount to invest in a spare battery is, um, is a no-brainer for me. When I go in Safari in Africa, I actually have six batteries. I have one in the camera and I have five spare on my 5D4 or my 7D2. Even uh, fortunately, those batteries are interchangeable. They'll also be able to be used on the R6. So, uh, you know, where there's a chance of having to use solar power to charge um, uh, your batteries or having no electricity for two, three days and just the very basics, spare batteries for me are going to be a vital part of my kit. So I would advise anybody who's buying this camera, you can just buy a spare battery. Um, it's, an, it's not a big deal, but uh, I'm sure you'll be a lot more comfortable and happy with that. Buffer and blackout. Uh, I decided to best show you these um, with a short video clip and uh, let's have a look and listen to what I have found. 
So here I have got a video clip of the EVF of the R6. I'm going to show you the um, buffer and the lack of blackout um, that a lot of people have mentioned they worried that they're going to have. Now, while this clip is running, I would like you to have a look up at the top where the buffer is uh, 85 shots. I only shoot in raw. And you can have a look as we go through the video. You'll see when I engage the shutter and I take the pictures and where I stop. And the focus just uh, picks up uh, the general um, the, the general subject. You'll also notice that I'm, I'm not being specific in shooting in specific video settings. I was just trying the camera as best I can to get a real world situation um, of how the um, the buffer and everything is is being recorded and the lack of blackout. So here we go. Okay, nice and smooth. There we go, we start shooting. As you can see, still shooting, no blackout. So let's have a quick look at that again for those that uh, missed it. Let's start off here. There we go. So it requires the subject pretty quickly, straight to the head, the eye. There I start shooting now. There's no blackout, guys, no blackout. And it's shooting plenty of images without suckling or battling. So there we go. That is great buffer and lack of blackout. So the last part of this uh, review is going to go around ISO. Um, those that uh, know me will realize that I have got absolutely no issues with using high ISO. I feel that um, where we are now with technology in the 20th century, 21st century, uh, in 2020, uh, really guys, ISO should not be a deal breaker. I um, have had great success with high ISO images. I recently had one uh, that was shot at 51,000 ISO, yeah, uh, 51,000. It was published in the Conservation um, for Photographers, the Remembering Rhinos series, the Remembering Wildlife books. And it also generated a large amount of money for conservation being sold as an independent print. So uh, I was quite blessed with that and uh, it just sort of validated my feelings. I really think one should worry about getting the shot and not worrying about your ISO being too high and a bit of noise. So with that mindset I took the R6 out and um, I, I decided to, to find something, a situation where I could really try my best to see what I could get as a usable um, image with going through all the ISO stops that I felt um, I could use. And I found the following. Let's have a look. So yeah, we have a half-collared kingfish taken uh, in Nars on the garden where we try to live uh, in a small estuary. Uh, note, this is taken handheld. Um, the subject was in the shadow and um, I have uh, not messed about with uh, settings. I've had to use um, different uh, settings to uh, compensate for the high ISO and the exposure, but I've tried across the board to keep everything the same. So here we have a look at ISO 3200. Um, really cool, really lovely image. We uh, click up to ISO 6400. Um, also Nice clean background, everything's balanced. ISO 12800, uh, still for me, very usable image, um, looking good, no obvious noise in the background. We go up to ISO 25600, yeah, you can you start seeing a bit of noise, but again, uh, you know, um, it's expected. It was a hot afternoon, so the heat of the sensor, you know, all the different things that play a fact, factor in noise is, um, you know, it's all relative. Let's go up to ISO 51200 and because 90% of people use the images on social media, websites and digital display, guys, this is more than more than acceptable in my books. Um, again, I have no issues with shooting at ISO and here's the cracker. We shoot at ISO 102400. Yes, there is visible noise. Um, you have a look at this. Is no big issue for me, still quite usable for Facebook, quite still usable for a website, social media, and I'd happily print this image on canvas. And you know, that's just also my personal preference. 
and uh, I'm not going to negate the fact that there is noise and you have a perceived lack of sharpness the higher ISO you go uh, simply the way the technology works um, so what I did with this image is I took it into the free software called Define it was uh, Nick software it's now Google Nick and it's uh, version 1 it's still fine I just used everything on automatic and I popped this out um, so for me this looks quite like an ISO 25,000 image but um, guys don't be afraid to use your ISO don't judge your camera on make a decision on whether it can shoot good clean images at ISO um, 100, 200, 300 I'm a wildlife and landscape photographer and for me in wildlife this is more than acceptable uh, I have um, I've never really worried what people say. I would rather get the shot than not have the shot because I was scared of putting my ISO up. So there you have it. The next review has been done. Um, I will prepare the next one in the next few days. And um, as usual, if you can sign up at the top, uh, subscribe, follow the ding dong button that you can receive notice of my videos. I'd really appreciate it if you could share this video uh, online. Um, it's uh, a real privilege to me to be able to share my opinion on photography, especially wildlife and landscape, which I'm very passionate about. Uh, also, if you want to follow me on social media, it's uh, Andrew Averly or Andrew Averly uh, Safaris Travel and Photography are the pages. And uh, you can have a look. There's quite a few uh, sample images of the last three weeks, four weeks that I've been shooting with a camera. But generally speaking, guys, thanks very much. Also, down below, ask Andrew any questions. Click on the link or just post it in the comments. Thanks very much. Have an awesome day.